Hi. This video is about reviewing the work that we've done on Goldschmidt's classification of elements. Victor Goldschmidt, seen in this photograph on the right, lived from 1888 to 1947. He was a Norwegian mineralogist who became known as the founder of modern geochemistry. He worked a lot on metamorphic rocks uh, and also on meteorites. His Jewish faith did lead to persecution by the Nazis, both in Germany and later in Norway, although he did manage to escape deportation to Auschwitz and later fled to the UK from Sweden. His geological work, though, led into this understanding of the chemical elements in terms of their affinities. He grouped them by the way they grouped themselves through natural geological processes. It is worth noting, though, that minerals can have more than one affinity with others. This is the periodic table of elements. Goldschmidt saw this in a slightly different way. What he saw were groups of different elements, perhaps groups that are different from the periods and groups uh, defined by the chemists. The first group he identified were what we call the atmophiles, volatile elements that have affinity with the atmosphere, uh, the gases. As you can see, these are the noble gases plus hydrogen, carbon and nitrogen. As geologists, we're not going to worry too much about these. We do find particularly carbon and nitrogen uh, in some minerals, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on these. The lithophile elements, on the other hand, are elements that we find in rocks. The name literally means uh, rock lovers. These elements combine readily with oxygen and they make up the bulk of the crust and mantle rocks that we find. The next group we call the chalcophile. Now a chalcophile literally means all living are minerals or elements that combine readily with sulfur. These are metals that are less likely to bond with oxygen and as a result they often form ore minerals. Particularly sulfide ores. The final group we need to identify are what we call the siderophiles. Now siderophile literally means iron loving. These are very high density minerals. They tend to sink uh, within the earth because they dissolve readily in iron. Now these minerals tend to be quite rare in the crust in most cases, but are very common deep within the earth. So we have these four groups, the amophiles, lithophiles, chalcophiles, and siderophiles. What do these then tell us? What's the significance of them? Perhaps their biggest importance is where we might find them in the earth. We're most likely to find our lithophile elements within the crust and the mantle, shown here in sort of blue, green, and red layers of the earth. The core is where we're most likely to find our siderophiles. But if you look back at your 
periodic table, particularly in how you've classified them. What do you notice about some of those particularly siderophile elements and perhaps chalcophile as well? Perhaps that will help you come up with your interesting question for class. I'll see you then.